Welcome to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. I'm honored to have Jeff Scott, CEO of ASAG, joining me to discuss what is required for businesses to be successful with Gen AI as they prepare for the future. He will also share valuable insights on how ASAG is supporting the SAP ecosystem on the Gen AI journey. Welcome to Tech Driven Business, Jeff. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for joining our show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Or I should say, uh, you can make that decision after we're done today. All right. Sounds like a plan. You know, hey, it's always good to have you, uh, Jeff, you know, especially meeting in person every year through either in, in the volunteer meeting or at Sapphire or other yeah. events. It's, it's always fun to have that conversation with you. So glad to have you on our show. What a pleasure to be here. And I want to thank you for your connection and commitment to ASUG, your commitment to the Michigan chapter, one of our most wonderful places to be in all of the United States. I have close ties to Michigan, so it's always wonderful to hear. Go green for those who are Michiganders, my alma mater. And I, you know, I think that uh, being part of ASUG and being part of this SAP community is a really a tremendous thing. I've been doing uh, the CEO job at ASUG for 10 years. And every year, as you mentioned, we get all 300 volunteers together to kind of plan the year and celebrate our successes and talk about our challenges. And it's a tremendous thing. So I encourage everyone to be part of ASUG. If you are an SAP professional and you want to be at the top of your game of, of SAP, there's no better place to be than being a, an active part of ASUG, which you are. And I want to thank you for that. I second that. Thank you. So today, you know, today we will be talking about how digital transformation and AI is changing the business landscape. How does that sound to you? I think this sounds like a tremendous conversation. It is absolutely is, and it's going to be fun. So let's start with the, the basics. You know, Jeff, you have been around for a long time, not not, not uh, counting your your original your dinosaur. Hey, hey, it's it's all good, you know. But your <laughs> extensive background with SAP, you know, can you share with our listeners a brief overview of your career yeah. journey? Well, I would love to, as, as we just uh, spoke about 10 years as the CEO of ASUG. And I don't love the CEO title. I, I like to think of myself as the chief community champion. My job is to rally us as a community around this SAP software and make sure all of us are getting the most value from it. The people that, you know, the organizations that are purchasing the software, we as all professionals in investing our careers into this uh, amazing ecosystem, it's very important that we feel like we can make forward progress. We feel that this is a place where we can learn, connect, and grow, which are three of our very important pillars. And so that's been a tremendous journey for me for the last 10 years. I, I didn't come into this intentionally. Prior to that, I was the CIO. I was at Tom Shoes in uh, Los Angeles. Prior to that, at, at a beef company, small beef company, only the third largest in the world in Greeley, Colorado, where we were also an SAP shop. And I, that was where I cut my teeth on being a full-time SAP advocate. And then prior to that, in your in your neck of the woods, in your backyard, in Dearborn, Michigan, doesn't take a lot to figure out what's in Dearborn these days. So I was there for almost uh, 10 years doing lots of different IT work. And then obviously prior to that, consulting and college and being a teenager and things like that. So that's a wonderful background, Jeff. It's okay. I mean, you know, I, I think the, the best part about this is being in your role, the role that you're playing at a, your background or your history really brings that tremendous amount of knowledge and, and technology know-how, which really is what a lot of ASA customers or in general SE folks who are dealing with technology on a daily basis can can utilize your 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 know-how and your your in-depth knowledge of what's going on in the industry versus you know someone with a background in business, you don't really have that kind of depth in terms of what you bring to the, the table. So you're so very kind. You're very kind. And in my career, I started off when I was uh, going to college, just a little bit west from where you are. Again, go green. Then that's the, the last I'm going to say that today, maybe. M my degree's in accounting. And I, I chose that field because I really wanted to understand how business worked. And I figured the best way to figure out how business would work is to understand how the money moves around. And Absolutely. accounting was actually a fallback for me. I started off in finance. And then this will date me tremendously. And then the stock market collapsed back in the late 80s. And I went, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I, I don't know I want to be on Wall Street anymore. And I grew up in the suburbs of New York City. So I had this delusion I would go back into New York and be 
on Wall Street. And I said, I don't think that's going to work so well. So I went to, I went to accounting and I, I found I liked it better. A little bit more pragmatic, right? Finance can be fairly esoteric. So I came into consulting and IT because I always thought about IT as a way in which businesses can be more efficient. And I was always you know, intrigued by how we could use technology to drive business outcomes. And that has served me throughout my career. So I, I, I really think about business outcomes first and technology second. Absolutely. And I think, and that's what really counts, right? How business yeah. drives technology. And that, that kind of takes me to my, my next uh, discussion point, you know, AI. AI took the business world by storm last year. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. How are ASUG and SAP supporting their clients with navigating AI and Gen AI in particular, right? I mean, everybody is about Gen AI. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that AI, generative AI, and all the things related to AI, right? Nothing new to that, Musanza, right? It, we've been around in the SAP ecosystem. AI has been around for a long time, right? What was new in November of 2022 when ChatGPT first came onto the market was this thing of generative AI, right? Well, that was different. Right. But, you know, most SAP practitioners, the people you and I are talking to today would say, hey, you know, we've been filling around with AI for a long time, you know, uh, understanding PDF documents, understanding pictures, converting, you know, pictures to text, scanning documents, scanning invoices, making sure we can convert all that. that none of that is terribly new. I, I think generative AI made it mainstream. And what was kind of back office technology that was used to achieve business outcomes all of a sudden became available to the masses. And it became available to the masses in a very simple way. I can sit down, I can write a sentence into a computer and it will produce paragraphs of very eloquent text. We can have a whole conversation about how accurate it is, but I could finally get this Star Trek-y type of thing where I could type a sentence in and I would get this back. And I could do cute things, you know, Tell me, you know, tell me how to bake a cake in Shakespearean English and it would do it right. Or, you know, so I think it became a, a piece of technology that everybody could connect to and that everybody includes the board of directors, the CEO, the rest of your business peers who can now say, I get it. I understand how this works and I want that for my business. We can make this work for all of us. And I think it's a very interesting point you mentioned, Jeff. Talk about C-suite, right? And, and this, you know, you always you know that in the in, in this I'm one of them. Yeah, it, exactly, right. So you know, I still get involved with a lot of implementations and you know, boots on ground. And I yep. know that a lot of these technology implementations, you have this gap between the C-suite and the and, and folks who are actually involved mm -hmm. in the in, in in the technology day to day, right? Do you think Gen AI is going to close that gap? Or what is your take on that perspective? Like bringing these two worlds together? I think generative AI is going to be an incredibly interesting diversion or, or departure for all of us in the sense that we've talked about for a long time the importance of some things in the SAP ecosystem that are near and dear to our heart. Master data, yep. accuracy of data archiving, right? Things that, you know, warm our hearts that make the business run for cover. You want to watch paint dry, have a conversation about archiving, right? And Absolutely. the challenge with all of that is if we really want to get the most value from a generative AI solution, whether it be SAP's Jewel or ChatGPT or everything in between, our enterprise data has to be lined up correctly. And I think this is where we're going to see a tremendous amount of energy and effort to understand how this enterprise data will form these models and make them work. There was an article in the New York Times, I think two weeks ago, and it, this is topical because last week I was in Las Vegas for a few days at Google Next. And I always go to Google Next and I, you know, and I also like to try to make it you know, to AWS and Microsoft's events as well, because it refreshes me and it makes me think about how to tackle these problems from different perspectives. And that coupled with the New York Times article was very interesting to me in that it appears we're running out of trainable data for these models, that our models now are demanding so much data that we just, we can't fill them, right? And so there was an interesting topic in, in Las Vegas about synthetic data which I'm still wrapping my head around and what that means. 
and I'm trying to understand how we get to the levels of data. We do know one thing that these generative AI models require a lot of data in order to give very effective answers. And even when they have a lot of data, they can still hallucinate. I mean, there's no greater data source than the English language over the last 300 years. Right. And the yeah. cool thing about it is it hasn't really changed all that much. You know, I can take all of that stuff and I can pour it in and yeah, there's different dialects, but the English language or pick a language, French, whatever, it hasn't moved all that much. No. So the data is fairly stable. Sure. Is that true when we think about our enterprise data? And the problem that I see coming is if we have lots of historical data, what does it really mean? How accurate is it? And then the second big question is how relevant is it? And if both of those are not at the top of their game, you run a huge risk that your model is being trained on data that isn't accurate, isn't relevant, and then you expect it to give you amazing results. The, the thing that makes me chuckle is the notion of saying to a model running on top of your SAP data, hey, what's the best product I should sell? And it spits back a product that you made 15 years ago, because it might've been at the time the most profitable based in parts that you don't even have access to anymore. And the model doesn't know that. I think there's another really important part of this whole equation. And that is something that I call gray data. And gray data is the data that's in our heads, in our minds, which is what we use to make decisions yeah. that the AI models have zero knowledge of. And the only way long-term an AI model will be able to replicate what you do, what I do, what anyone listening today does, is it has exactly what's up in your head. And it's not going to. We still know today, in, 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 you know, you're involved in SAP implementations all the time that it takes someone interpreting that data yeah, oftentimes sure. to understand what it's saying and what cues it's giving. AI doesn't understand that because it's missing all the stuff that's in your gray space. And if that's the case, and how much, how much of the data that you use to run your enterprise is gray data versus bits and bytes? And if the answer is greater than 50%, 60%, 70%, wow, we got a lot of missing data and the model's not gonna be that effective. For sure, for sure. I think it's, a, it's an interesting point you mentioned about historical data and the quality of data. And that kind of leads me into this next conversation about, you know, I'm, I'm an analytics person and data focus. Mm. And, and, you know, it's all about good information right. will produce good results, right? right? So from that perspective, I'm curious, what are you seeing with ASUG members as it applies to their approach, you know, especially to real-time data and analytics and also the move to the cloud, because a lot of things are happening in the cloud. So what is your take in this whole space? Well, well certainly I, I believe that if you are going to want to participate, play in a generative AI, AI space, and you say, and probably before you make that conclusion, you have to ask a question, which is where do you and your organization want to be on the innovation curve? Do you want to be on the very front of it do you want to be in the middle of it? Do you want to be, you know, where do you want to be? Now, if you want to be on the very, very back end of the innovation curve, continue doing what you're doing today. If you want to be to the middle of the innovation curve or the front end, and I think about it as a bell curve. If you want to be to the middle to the front end of that curve, and most people don't want to be at the front. That's a, that, you know, you get, you need a lot of courage and a lot scary. of strength to be, that's the scary place. But there are organizations that are there, right? Let's yeah. say you the, you want to be safely in the middle. I don't want to lead the pack. I don't want to, I don't want to trail the pack. I want to be right in the middle. It necessitates three things. I firmly believe. Number one, you have to be in the cloud. Number two, you have to really think about your software investments as software as a service, right? Yeah. So you're moving the, the requirement to for changes and updates to the software vendor in this in this world, SAP. And yeah. number three as little customization as possible. If you can do those three things and you can do them well, you have the greatest likelihood that you will be able to take all of this innovation, absorb it and go, which to your question is when you talk about analytics, when you talk about predictive analytics, that's what you're gonna need, right? For, sure. For many, For sure. many SAP customers, that is a tectonic shift in perspective. And there's certainly the longer you have been an SAP customer and the more customizations you have made for whatever reason, your business process doesn't line up with SAPs, 
SAP didn't have a solution for you at the time. We talk about this thing of technical debt and where I quibble with some of the, the leading thought people is we tend to say and infer the technical debt is bad. Well, I don't think any of us as SAP practitioners wake up in the morning and say, today is the day I'm going to build a lot of technical debt. There are some good reasons for it. And there might be some bad reasons for it too. I don't know how to do something, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to code it. I get it, right? But I don't necessarily believe that with a technical debt is something that we all strive for. You know, motherhood and apple pie, as few customizations as possible. The problem now is the stakes are, are way up because we've yeah. learned that you have to be in cloud, you have to be in SaaS, and you have to be almost no customization in order to adopt fast. And that means, right, that we have to be super careful about customization. That creates another uh, problem inside most organizations, and that is how do you handle change control and how do you handle organizational change management? So the IT folks say, hey, this is good for me. No customization. I'm good to go. And the business says, well, wait a minute here. I have to retrain thousands of people across 16 time zones in 32 different geographies, and that's hard. And it is. And it is. So how do we find that necessary balance? And I think if you've been on SAP a long time, that transition is not going to happen overnight. It's going to be multiple years, maybe even a decade, dare I say. And if you haven't started your S4 migration yet, you are fastly running out of time. And so there's no time like the present to start working on that because absent that, you are going to be perpetually behind. And I don't want to be cavalier here, Mustanza, because what I just described is an epic undertaking. Yes. But if you get there, predictive analytics is super interesting, right? We have got to figure out a way to take our technology professionals and find ways for them to have more time. Because if we really want to do predictive analytics, it requires us to jump into data sets. It requires us to look at data, plant floor data, log data, all these other things where we haven't traditionally looked for things in order to find those patterns and those indications and those clues that help us sell more, get more efficient, do other things, right? And that requires time. And in order to get that time, we have to be more efficient. So if we're going to spend all of our time working on customizations of SAP, we are not going to be doing predictive analytics. For sure. And I think, I think that's a, one of the key, key points you mentioned about that, right? Stop spending time on doing things that are not adding any value, especially in this fast pace, changing constantly on a daily basis. And you put AI in the middle of all this, all of a sudden, you know, your stakes are different. Your, your challenges are different. And at the same time, the time to make those decisions is shrinking for you. So for organizations to be nimble and be able to act quickly, I mean, all the things you just mentioned, I think they go hand in hand, especially a lot of times folks think about analytics as a, as a byproduct, right? It's after the fact. And yeah. then what we're thinking or what you're talking here at this point is put analytics in front because that will drive that, that, that whole behavior of change of exactly what is important to me. You know, predictive is one part of it. You know, so many different aspects of information which you can put your right brains and your geeks, right? I mean, everyone has got geeks in the organization, right? I mean, you want to put those folks to good use and the best way you can do it is get ahead of the curve, right? Don't wait, basically. That's 100%, 100%. And, and I'm excited about the potential of AI to help us migrate systems faster. I'd okay. like to see us use AI to help understand quality in data, to help us understand how we lift and shift business processes out of legacy systems into new systems. I'd like to understand how we use AI to drive business test cases, yep. quality assurance. I, I, I believe that we are at a massive inflection point where the upgrading of these systems, if we, you asked a question earlier about digital transformation, right? Yep. We have to move to the next generation of SAP software. I believe that unlocks the gateway to everything we're talking about today. That cannot be a five-year project. We have got Absolutely. to figure out as technology professionals how to automate it, how to make it faster, how to do it faster, and how to make sure we can get an unlock value faster. It's my biggest ask of SAP. And in conversations that I have with their CEO and their leadership team, please stop making new SKUs for new software licenses, I, I, I implore you, 
to make your software easier to migrate and uplift and move to the next generation? And can we use some of these AI ML tools to achieve that? It's essential. For sure. No, for sure. No, and I think in what all this technology and, and, and SAP, I mean, let's come back, you know, to our conversation. ASUG. 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 Great start in 2024, right? Yeah. I mean, personally, I know we had over 150 people at our Michigan chapter meeting back in February. Fantastic. And, and that, yeah, that is absolutely is, is amazing, right? And so what can ASAC members expect this year from their membership? Mm. Can you can you delve into that? 100%. First and foremost, I think you said the most important thing. Where we're seeing the most interest, the most excitement is in our 39 chapters. Yep. So if you are an SAP professional and you want to be at the top of your game and you want to learn, connect, and grow, you don't have to jump on an airplane. Of course, we welcome you to do that. You don't have to spend hotel room nights Go to your local ASUG chapter and become involved. You will meet people like you who want to get ahead and understand how to solve problems using SAP. And you know you're you're in the middle of the of the Michigan you know SAP scene. It's amazing. So Absolutely. go spend time there, which is a huge pitch for what you do and why you volunteer is because you want to be part of you know what's happening on the ground real time in geography. And that is what the chapter organization is here to do. And I would really like to see that over the next three to five years grow to epic proportions. I have a challenge. I want to see your Michigan meeting not be just 150 people. I want it to be 350 people. That to me is exciting, which is a very different change of, of perspective from us. But I think in a post-pandemic world, what a great opportunity to get out from behind your laptop and whether you're back in the office or still working remotely, go spend time with your friends in, a, in an ASUG chapter event in, in Michigan or in California or in Florida. Pick, pick a place and just go and have fun and meet, meet your peers. It'll be so wonderful for you. If that's not good enough, then enjoy some of the other events that we do. Get online and, and do some research and education there. We'll be, we have you know ASUG annual conference and SAP Sapphire coming up in June. In the, in the fall, we have SAP for Utilities. We have ASUG Best Practices, which is a whole source of, of industry-based events. And then we cap off the year. This is my most exciting event. We cap off the year in West Palm Beach, Florida, November 12th through 14th with ASUG Tech Connect. It used to be called TechEd, but we've kind of reconfigured TechEd with SAP. So TechEd is a virtual program. But in North America, it's ASUG Tech Connect. So if you want to wrap up 2023, sorry, 2024, getting my years yeah. all confused and get ready for an amazing 2025 ASUG Tech Connect is the place to be. And I think those are fine. What else can you do? First five newsletter comes out every Monday morning. It is an amazing place to just get a recap of the top five articles that happened in the SAP ecosystem over the last week. Uh, podcast, you and I are in a podcast today. Everyone's doing podcast. ASUG does podcast. Man, be there. Let's get together at Campus Connect, right? Citadel University, the University of Texas at Dallas, Fayetteville State University, and then my favorite, Michigan State University, there's my last plug for Go Green, are all very much in the Campus Connect program. What a great way to have this next generation of talent get excited about the careers that we've been so fortunate to have in the SAP ecosystem. No, for sure. I think there is a lot to learn. And it's the, the, the best thing about it, like you said, and there's so many mediums. Like, you know, you pick what makes you, you know, what, what really floats your boat, especially after the pandemic, a, a lot of folks are, are open to coming out and, and meeting others and kind of getting to know what's coming excited. No, put it this way, you know, excitement is one thing. Right. You get to meet people and, and, and meet either people. it's online, either it's in person or you're traveling somewhere else. Yeah. Or like you mentioned, June. In June, big event, uh, a lot of new things are, are being shared and you understand and, and know exactly where SAP is going, where ASA wants to take you. Uh, in your journey and as as, a, as an organization you want to learn from your peers right and that's the best opportunity so. and one thing i like about your, your 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 plug for the you know the the, the november event you cannot go wrong with it it's exactly no. it's like you you end your year on something that you really want to take into next year and that kind of sets your basis for exactly what you want to do so a lot of opportunities i, I really love the the whole platform that you kind of explained so well Thank you. And if you, there is a lot going on inside the SAP ecosystem. It is a wonderful place for professionals like you, me, and everyone else, 130,000 of us in North America, to make our home, to learn, connect, grow, to thrive. 
And all you got to do is just, you know, raise your hand and go to a chapter meeting, you know, meet with people outside of your, your, your standard core team that you might be working on SCP for, and the whole world will be unlocked for you. And it'll make you feel like what you're doing has value. You know, that the things you're learning can have a place in this broader ecosystem. We are going to need a lot more talent who stands there in the next 10 years than we have today. It frightens me about how much change is happening. And I believe we are all find very rewarding careers inside of SAP. No, I think the, the the future is really bright, and and I know we can we can talk for hours, Jeff. I mean, we you could. know, your, your knowledge, your 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 passion for so technology, kind. and as I'd like to leave with this one question for you, as far as topics and and discussions you covered, what is the one key takeaway that you want our listeners to to leave with? I believe the key takeaway today is generative AI is real. And the faster you get in and start contemplating what it can and can't do, we are trying inside of ASUG lots of different technologies and we're fiddling and we have this kind of, you know, experimental culture. Let's go try some stuff. It's good. And I think, you know, we are, we're doing a lot with text, you know, video to text recaps, things like that. I think there's a ton of upside to all of this. Go get yourself immense in AI. Yeah, for sure. I think that's great advice. And it seems like a lot of folks who are still on, on the edges, you know, it's time for them to kind of move on and, and get on this bandwagon because this, this train has start rolling and there's no stopping. At least I don't see it in, in the near future. Today is the worst day AI ever will be. It will get better from here and it's going to be on an exponential scale. So don't wait another three, four weeks or months or years. Get in now. Great advice. Thank you. Now, this, is, you. this is an awesome conversation. Uh, really enjoyed the talk and I, I would love to get you back, you know, in the future. Whenever like, you need more feedback on how things have settled down once we travel through the 2024. We are here for you. And we, I appreciate greatly everything you do for the community, for the SAP community, for ASUG and everything you do in Michigan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. Jeff Delved deep into the transformative power of Gen AI. He shared valuable insights on how organizations can transform business with generative AI. His main takeaway, generative AI is real. Go get yourself immersed in AI as today is the worst day AI will ever be. We'd love to hear from you. Continue the conversation by connecting with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Learn more about Innovative Solution Partners and schedule a free consultation by visiting isolutionpartners.com. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Information is in the show notes.